Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So welcome to Face to Face. Uh, we've got another wonderful interview uh, planned today with uh, Kalyani Mem. Uh, she's a filmmaker. She's a producer. She's a cinematographer. Uh, she's by this, you know, just what little I know of her. She's a, 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 a wonderful woman. Uh, so thanks uh, for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we've we've got lots to talk about. So. Um, so Wikipedia, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read it. An award-winning filmmaker, whose film A River Changes Course, which she directed and produced, has won several awards, including the Grand Jury Award for World Cinema Documentary at the 2013 Sundance Film Festival, and the Golden Gate Award for Best Doc Feature at the 2013 San Francisco International Film Festival. So clearly, you know what you're doing. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think it's about knowing what you're doing. It's it's really about knowing what you're passionate about. For me, Excellent. yeah, yeah, no, that 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 makes a ton of sense. I will will definitely get back to passion. So 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 this is not your first film. No, it's not. It's my first feature, though. Uh, my first um, short was Between Earth and Sky with um, David Mendez. It's a short about. Um, Iraqi refugees living in Syria, Jordan, and Egypt. Um, and then the second documentary that I worked on as cinematographer and associate producer as well as researcher was Inside Job about the global financial crisis. Just, yeah, just that little film, Inside Job? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, David, I don't know if you know this, I, I am actually uh, wasn't a filmmaker. I was actually a lawyer before I became a filmmaker. Wow. <laughs> it's I, a whole other thing that we can explore in this conversation. Yeah. Well, we, we may not have time for that. We might have to do a follow-up <laughs> interview for the, uh, the legal discussion. Well, that's amazing. Well, well, listen, let's, 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 uh, I'm going to, I'm going to make, certainly make a note of that. But I mean, so, so we've got Iraqi refugees, uh, film about Cambodia uh, and, and, and the way forward, a film about about uh, a financial meltdown. It sounds like you're a pretty serious person. I mean, you know, you you don't fool around. You're you're uh, you're taking on some pretty serious issues and and staring them right in the face. Yeah. Well, I, I just feel like there's so many serious issues that you know we have to confront right now. And for me, in my decisions in working on a project, it's always been um, fueled by a need to address you know, a, a certain issue that is compelling at the moment. You know, in 2006, that issue for us, especially here in the United States, but globally, was the Iraq War. Um, and that's how I became interested in the Iraqi refugee issue. And then with the Inside Job, you know, in 2008, 2009 to 2010, I and mean, it was the global financial crisis that was, you know, hitting all of us and affecting all of us. And with the River Changes course, you know, I think the issue, the environmental issue, of you know, climate change and, and global change and development and globalization that is impacting people's lives, especially the indigenous and the most marginalized. Those are issues that are affecting everyone all over the world, you know, in many countries like Cambodia. So I think that that's an issue that, you know, we need to grapple with right now. And, you know, I feel like the film, you know, River Changes Course, you know, touches, us on, touches on it, you know, a little bit and, and, and opens up that discussion. So, so tell me, I mean, oh man, there's so many things I want to talk to you about, uh, and and I know that my listeners are going to be thrilled about any you know uh, uh, path we take. But tell me, tell me about the title of your your this this film, A River Changes Course. What? Wh yes. Why? Why the title? I mean, it's clearly a metaphor. Um, and and maybe you could sort of weave in a little bit of Cambodian history there as well. Of course, of course. So A River Changes Course is the English title, uh, which I'll talk about first, but there's also the Khmer title, which is Wang Thuk Thale, and I'll talk about that after that. Um, so the first, you know, the English title, A River Changes Course, the reason why I selected that title was 
for two reasons. You know, the first is that the Tanlay Sap, uh, which is one of the largest, most diverse bodies of fresh water in the world, you know, is in Cambodia. And um, it is one of the few rivers in the world that changes course every year. You know, so one year, uh, one part of the year, one half of the year during the monsoon season, when the, you know, the rain falls and floods the waters, um, the, the, the Lay Sap River becomes, you know, swells to 10 times its size. And, and then the other half of the season, when it dries out, it, you know, it, um, it actually uh, decreases in size and then right. pushes the water out in the other direction. So it's twice a year, the river changes course in Cambodia. And, you know, I, I thought that that title was appropriate, you know, because of the, the lives, you know, that are featured in the film that are changing course as well. You know, it's really uncertain, you know, in what direction Sassamorn's life, you know, Suri's life and Kiel's life are going to go, you know, and the history of Cambodia is, it's, you know, it's very complicated, you know, that really well, yes. you know, especially, you know, the grand, you know, period of, you know, of Angkor, you know, the Angkorian period when, you know, and when Cambodia flourished, you know, as a civilization, but then, you know, the more tragic period between 1975 and 79 during the Khmer Rouge period when nearly 2 million people died, you know, so the river of life in Cambodia has always been changing course constantly. But at this moment, I think, you know, it's, it's a really critical moment for Cambodia. You know, we've passed this period of genocide and a period of, you know, atrocity, you know, that many people know about, but, you know, there are atrocities I feel that are happening right now in Cambodia you know, the devastation of Cambodia's forests, you know, and the devastation of people's lives and thousands of families being thrown off their land, you know, across the country right. you know, that I think are really important right now and that many people are not aware of. And so the river of life for Cambodia is constantly changing course, but I think that the direction that it takes really depends on us, you know, and, and what we do to, 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 um, to change, to, to have that river, you know, take the course that we want. Yeah, I think, the, I think I mean, I was fortunate enough, as I mentioned to you earlier, to see it when I was last in Phnom Penh, which was in, in, in May of this year. And for a screening of one, this I was wonderful. I was uh, even in an air-conditioned room, too. It was fantastic. Uh, but but for me, what, what was so uh, wonderful and astounding was, I, you know, I think I, I said to you as well that I, I felt like every, I feel like everyone should see this film. I feel like it's an important mm -hmm. film for everyone, not just for Cambodians, not just for international development students or, you know, academic Academics that are looking at sustainability issues and things like that and how we can have a greater impact. But this is a really, this is a triumph of the human spirit. This is, you know, at the risk of sounding kind of corny and, and overstating it, it really is about making a difference and about, about incremental change and about how we're, we're all in this crazy, beautiful world together. Yes. No, it's really true. And um, I think that ties into the, um, the, the, the Khmer title, which is Khmer Thich and that title refers to a traditional um, uh, method of, of gathering, of, of drinking water, you know, traditional practice of drinking water from the lake. And, you know, in Cambodia, and you've probably seen this, you know, when people go to the lake or the stream or the river, they take their hands, they clasp their hands, and they dip their hands into the water, and then they raise it to their lips and drink the, you know, the water from their yes. hands. And that moment, you know, the, the, the person is connected to nature, you know, is connected to the water and the water is connected to the person. And so there's no disconnect. There's no division, you know, between nature and people. But right now, you know, people are rarely, you know, um, using this, utilizing this practice. You know, people now are, are drinking from glass cups, you know, sometimes plastic cups, you know, and, and then now even styrofoam cups. You know, so we are becoming increasingly disconnected from nature, you know, and for, you know, the people in the film, you know, for Sidi and Safsamorn and Kyo, they're also becoming, they, their lives were so connected to nature before that because of development, you know, because of mm -hmm. their, their, their forests being slashed, you know, their, their livelihoods being impacted, you know, all the fish, you know, being fished to extinction, you know, and they, you know, for Kyo, mm -hmm you know, having to leave her village, you know, to go work in the factories in Phnom Penh, you know, this, there's complete disconnection from nature. 
And, and I think that, you know, increasingly people, you know, like Kyo Safsamor and, and, and Sadi all over the world, you know, indigenous people, um, local people, you know, are becoming increasingly disconnected from their, from their natural world. And I think that's a really sad thing. I think that, you know, you know, once we are disconnected from nature, you know, once we are removed from our natural world, that's when we forget, you know, the world that really gives us life. You know, it's the water that gives us life. It's land that gives us life and the forest that gives us life. If we forget that, and this is what we are doing now, you know, we will destroy ourselves ultimately. Do, do you think great film, do you think great film, uh, um, one of the purposes of it is to help us to remember? Do you think? Yeah, it- yeah, definitely. You know, when, when people watch the film, and this is, I never, you know, I never had any expectations making the film, but what I really love is when we, people watch it, they don't, they don't feel like they are watching someone else. You know, they actually feel like they're on a journey and they are, you know, meeting these people, meeting the families and connecting with the families. And they're also seeing a reflection of themselves and their lives. And and I find that the most, you know, amazing thing. And I think that's the purpose of film and of literature and of art is really to connect us to ourselves and to connect us to the things that we feel are important. Um when I was making the film, what I found, I, I, you know, woke up every day and I went to my desk and I edited, you know, things and I, you know, you know, got put clips together. And every day that I, you know, did that, I felt like I was always constantly surprised, you know, by what the people were saying or by the clips that I was watching, you know, you know, every day was, it was a new experience for me. And some of the things that I realized, you know, along the way was that, the, the, the stories that are presented in the film are not just stories about the people of Cambodia. It's really about the people all over the world, you right. know, about, you know, many people all over the world who are being impacted, you know, by environmental devastation, you know, and by globalization and development. And it's even, you know, I, I even say it's about people here in North America. You know, a lot of people don't, you know, we're so busy in our lives, you know, working so hard, you know, working, you know, um, some people six days a week, you know, with only one day off and, you know, working so hard, not just to pay for health care and not just to only af- you know, to afford education for our children, you know, to, af- you know, to afford the life that we live, that we forget, you know, the struggle that we're going through and that globalization and development is impacting all of us. You know, there are people here in the United States, you know, who can't afford health care, you know, and people who can't afford to even send their children to school, you know. And so these, you know, these struggles, I think, are universal. Well, I think I think you're absolutely right. I, I've been working in international issues for years. And I, th- I often when people talk about poverty, I think, well, you know, let's talk about what kind of poverty is it? Is it extreme? Is it moderate? Is it relative? And so on. And so I've been kind of disconnected from what's been going on in my own country, in Canada. And when you look at some of the, the issues that are going on here, I mean, we do, I mean, I don't know that we have extreme poverty in the sense of less than a dollar a day, uh, you know, according to the World Bank, but we have a lot of significant issues that are going on in certain communities around the country, that people that are vulnerable and are, are, are at risk. And, uh, and you know, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I loved what you said about, you know, just before our uncomfortable silence there, um, yes. you know, you talked about art and the purpose of it, it you know allowing us to connect with ourselves and I, I i don't know if you said it or not but i'd like to add and connect us to others and, yes, you know exactly. and and that we are all in this mess together and yeah. and if we can be reminded of that and reminded of it often you know some i was talking to somebody recently who 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 was talking about um, i believe about about a message getting through and sometimes these things are you know they're like uh, you know taking a cold or sorry, taking a bath, uh, you know, it, you got to do it, but then a few days later, you got to take another one. And so you got to, you got to keep reminding yourself of these things. You know, you yeah. don't just, you don't just see one film like this and go, okay, everything's going to be better now. And I, I, you know, or read one book or, you know, this is a, this is a process. This is a, a, a um, you know, the river changes course over time. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's, it, it changes you know, very slowly, um, but it can also change very quickly and, and dramatically. And does you know, that it does that drive you a little crazy? Like, are you? Would you say you're an impatient person? Would you? You know, you're, you're, you know, do you want to see Cambodia turn a corner tomorrow? I mean, 
<laughs> you know, that's a really interesting question because I, it takes patience to do, you know, good work. Um, but at the same time, it takes impatience to, to really be, you know, proactive and to, to try to, you know, make a difference in the world. You know, I think it's because I'm impatient with what is happening that I'm trying to, you know, work on things that will allow me to, to communicate with people and get them to understand, you know, the bigger picture of what is happening, you know, all over our world right now. You know, what's really interesting is some people have asked me, you know, um, you've worked on Inside Job and now you've worked on a River Changes course. Those films seem very different from each other. And I said, what? Not at all. Right. I feel like they're so similar in, in, in many ways. And I think both of them, what how they're similar is, well, the first one um, attacks, you know, the system and uh, the systematic way in which we, you know, uh, uh, we, well, which we operate our financial system. And then with a, a River Changes course, it looks at intimate lives, you know, and people who are impacted, you know, by this system, but they all look at the system itself. And, you know, and, and think, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the conclusion is that the system that we're operating under is flawed. Yes. You know, it's no longer working for us. You know, this globalization, globalization is great, but, if it's impacting people's lives and destroying people's lives and destroying the planet, then we need to take a step back and ask, how can we do things different? What I love, what I loved about this film as well, um, and I, what I love about a great documentary film is that it, and, and my background academically is philosophy. I have a, a master's and an undergrad in philosophy. And so uh, I love the question. I love a refined question. I'm, I'm more interested in a better question than I am the answer. And so yes. a, a great film like this to me raises new questions. And so you hopefully, you know, you and I chatted before we hit the record button where we talked about, you know, this type of a film, it's really important to have the conversation afterwards. And you can, and you and your team, you want to be in front of university students and you want to be in villages where you can actually chat about it. And I think that's awesome. It's amazing because that's to me as a teacher and a student, a perpetual student and an yeah. re avid reader, I think that's where it's going to really start to to, to bubble yeah. under the service, and, exactly. and 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 you get this wonderful, brilliant opportunity not only to make something that's going to stand the test of time, but you know also to plant some seeds along the way, which is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. You know, I just came back from Cambodia. Actually. Yes, I did know that. Yeah, and we were, and I was there during the Cambodia's fifth national elections, which is an incredible time to be in Cambodia. You know, things are really changing quickly and changing dramatically. And and people, you know, are are struggling for their lives, you know, and struggling to express themselves. But it's not just about it's not about expression. It's it's really about living and being able to live a full and dignified life. They're all everyone is struggling for that right now in Cambodia. You know, in Q, um one of the characters in the film mm -hmm. who um, leaves her village, you know, to go and work in the factories in the in in Phnom Penh, you know, I actually followed her back to the ballot box in her village. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, and I asked her, you know, what is the most important thing for you right now? You know, what do you want from this election? And she said, you know, and very emphatically, all I want is a better wage. I want a livable wage. I want to make not 80 US dollars a month. And actually last year she made six, uh, only 61 US dollars a month. Only recently, a few weeks ago, did they raise the minimum wage to 80 US dollars a month. And she said, I, I wanna make not 80 US dollars a month, I wanna make 150 US dollars a month. And why? Because, you know, the cost of living is, is, is skyrocketing. And she names all the vegetables and all the things that she can't afford anymore <laughs> because wow. The prices have gone up so much. Wow. You know, Glory, it's, it's like one of the cheapest vegetables you could find. She said, you know, it's just not affordable anymore for her. And 80 US dollars a month is not going to cut it. When I was, when I was there. And she can't, you know, send money back home to her family. When I, when I was there in May, I read in the newspaper that uh, the prime minister was going to increase wages to $80 an hour. And I talked to a few, a few folks. A uh, month, month. You know, locally and it was kind of like yeah that's just it's good timing isn't it just in time yeah, for the exactly. election yeah <laughs> yeah and then the and then the comment was and even 80 dollars a month i mean where who who can live on that anywhere in the world never exactly. mind never mind cambodia yeah. yeah exactly but you know that's what it really comes down to for the people in cambodia is just how can i survive you know how do i survive and and be able to support my family and that's what the film is about you know it's it's about 
is taking a look at the people, the most important people, you know, that, that we need to consider right now, you know, the people who are being impacted immediately, you know, by the environmental devastation that we are wreaking on the planet. And, and they are the ones who, who, who are hit, you know, the most and affected the most. It's not us sitting in our office, you know, and, and, you know, surfing the internet and drinking our latte and, you know, and, and going to, you know, shopping at Walmart, you know, we're not the ones who are affected by the environmental devastation. It's the people like, you know, Kyo City and Sasa Warren. They're the ones who are immediately affected and they're the ones we really need to consider, you know, when we consider policies. Um, but at the same time, I think what is really wonderful about the film is that it, it makes no judgment on us. You know, there's yes, no judgment think, yeah. on anyone. You know, it's not pointing the finger and saying, you know, you can't sip your latte and you can't, <laughs> you know, do what you do. It's, it's just saying that we are all in this together, you know, and, and we are all being affected. You know, every one of us, except maybe the top one percent. That's it. There is, yeah, exactly. And but, we're and we're and we're all being affected in, in and we're all being affected in you know different ways as well. Exactly. exactly. How do you? Um, so I can I think I can you know we haven't met face to face, which is ironic uh, based on the title of the uh, the the podcast. But, but <laughs> how you know you you sound like uh, an incredibly uh, hopeful person there's a there's a tone in your voice and i and i mean that in the best sense of the word oh, um, how do you you know how do you look at the the world financial collapse oscar oscar winning film right um, iraqi refugees you know cambodia you know uh, uh, and 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 still remain hopeful and still say you know what the young people are are the future still believe in change i still believe in in little things making a big difference how do you do that uh, it's, it's it's kind of hard you know to be honest with you um i i just went um backpacking in the sierras you know a few days ago it's one of my favorite places in the world you know yosemite and, you know, uh, my partner and I, we camped, you know, near this beautiful lake, you know, Alpine Lake, just a gorgeous place, you know, but wherever I go, I like to also read, you know, up on where I go and, and, you know, what is happening there. And my thought was, you know, this looks really beautiful and gorgeous and serene and, you know, almost like a paradise. Mm -hmm. But there are so many changes that are happening to the Sierras right now that, you know, we can't even see with our eyes because of the you know, the time that has passed, you know, the Sierras actually looked so different, you know, a um, hundred years ago, and now it's completely changed. And, and I think that's how it is, you know, all over the world is that, you know, we think that we have trees around us, you know, we think we have all these forests, the Amazon still exists, you know, and so, you know, there's really not that much that we need to do. Um, but, there is so much, you know, and I think that's what encourages me, you know, is that, um, you know, there are uh, people out there who are willing, you know, to, 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 to make that fight. And there are people that I meet, you know, all over the world who are doing such amazing things that encourages me mm. you know, to, to keep going. And it's really those connections, you know, and when I'm screening the film, especially during the elections, this past elections, you know, in Cambodia, we screened, you know, in Vietnam um, Long, we also screened at Kyo's um, uh, garment factory, you know, dormitory. And uh, we also screened, you know, at Meta House and, and to you know, young Cambodian filmmakers. And what really encourages me is the, the, the interest that people have in the film and, you know, their, their willingness to explore the deeper issues. And I think as long as we continue to have these conversations and discussions, and, um, you know, and talk about what's happening. I think that's what gives me hope, you know, for the future. But once we stop doing that, yeah. you know, I think that's when, you know, all hope is gone, you know, which is why I made a river changes course the way that I made it, you know, which is non-judgmental, you know, and, and just about people's lives, you know, human lives and about humanity, you know, and the reason is because we need to, to talk about it. We can't point the finger at anyone. I think all of us are to blame for what is going on in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's not about blame. It's really about uh, perspective, you know, and changing the perspective that we have 
and getting people to see things differently. You know, that may be the way that we, the course that we're taking in, you know, with, you know, globalization developed right now, maybe that course is not the right course. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe it's not the right course or, you know, maybe it's yeah. it's not sustainable. Maybe, you know, yeah, no, I, I, and you know what? I love what you're saying about the whole idea of dialogue. For me, a great film is a dialogue. It's internal. It leads to other conversations and questions and so on, like we chatted about before. But but I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. I think if the moment we start talking about these issues, in fact, the moment, you know, what is that cliche about the moment you, you think you've arrived, you know, is, mm-hmm. when, you, is, is when you start to fail. Um, yes. Yeah, I uh, my uncle's got this. Uh, my uncle from um, just outside of Luton in England. Um, uh, what I what is how does it go? What I know uh, could fill a book, um, <laughs> right? Which sounds kind of arrogant and cocky. Yeah, right? it does. <laughs> but then, but then he follows it up with what I don't know could could fill a library. And I'd never heard it before, and it, it's it's kind of corny. But but even at his age, and his in his early age, even even at his age, now I'm sounding condescending. But but you know he's he's open to the idea that hang on a second here, I know lots of stuff. But wow, this is an incredible world, you know. Could fill the universe. Yeah, and I think that to me is awe inspiring. You know, it encourages me to want to, to to learn even more. You know, and I go back to the Sierras, you know, when we were camping and looking up at the stars, you know, looking up at the sky, you know, I, I, I'm just so amazed, you know, at, at the world out there. There's so much out there to explore and to see and to know. And, you know, it really actually, and I love the mountains because it humbles us too. You yes. know, when you're there in the mountains, you're so small and, you know, the world is so vast before you. And I think that's what it's about. It's really about humility, and um, and 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 learning to 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 live, you know, with nature, not as an enemy, you know, but but as this awe-inspiring thing, you know, that can inspire us to do great things, and 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 is actually feeding us, and um, supporting us. And if we destroy nature, then we re- we really destroy ourselves. Do you think that um, with a movie like this, uh, with a movie like Inside Job or, um, you know, other great docs or, you know, great sort of, you know, socially just and relevant films, do you think for the most part they're preaching to the converted or do you actually imagine that they're planting seeds that are going to grow into, you know, greater oaks, you know? Yeah, I think that's all we can hope for is just to plant seeds. You know, and, and, you know, maybe there's one person in the audience who didn't realize something before. And then it's, you know, suddenly, you know, it, it, it taps into this subconscious, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, level, you know, that they've never realized before. And, you know, so I, I think most people who watch, you know, these kind of watch documentaries in general are people who are already aware. Um, but, you know, again, like you said, you know, what we don't know you know, fills, can fill a library <laughs> or fill the universe. And so there's so many things that I think that we can, you know, um, become aware of, you know, by watching, you know, a, a different kind of documentary. I think, you know, one of the things that when I first went to Cambodia uh, and uh, was in 2002, I think, and, uh, but I had read a book by a Canadian author uh, called uh, Cambodia, uh, uh, and the subtitle was a book for people who find television too slow. And <laughs> it's really interesting. What he did was this author, Brian Fawcett, he mm-hmm. wrote all these short stories, fictional short stories, and then this massive footnote. And the footnote was actually an essay about the Khmer Rouge and the, basically the eradication of memory. And yes. so he, he compared this whole notion of year zero. And this book went back, I think he wrote it in about 80, 89. So mm-hmm. it wasn't that long after. And I remember reading it at about 93 and just having this really odd idea about who the Khmer Rouge were and Cambodia. And, is, you know, never in a million years would I have I've thought that I was going to actually wind up in the country, never mind falling in love with it. And so I come there and I just, I see this whole world. And, and I mean, I'm in mean, one small country in Southeast Asia in a, in a different way and the language and the way people think and the way they interact and I had and I remember being so struck by this notion of I have no idea 
Like, you know, I, you know, there's a hundred and what is it? 197 countries. I should know this about 197 <laughs> countries in the world. And I remember coming home and speaking to my dad and saying, dad, how come as a kid, I was watching star Wars when this was going on in, in 77, that's when star Wars came out. And I, yeah. I, I didn't at least have some kind of understanding what was going mm -hmm. on in Cambodia. And, wow. you know, and the, rea and the reality, and the reality is people don't still don't know today. So I think, I think we're back to your yeah. film again and saying, here's a, here's a new story to tell. Here's a, here's a much more positive and empowering story to tell. Yeah. Well, no, it's not, it is more positive and more empowering. Um, you know, but I chose to tell the story because it is what is happening right now. Right. You know, and I think that the, um, the difficulty with Cambodia is that, you know, people are really, um, moved by the, the killing fields, you know, they're moved by a story, the story of genocide and um, the story of terror and violence. And it's something that, you know, people not just moved, but it, in a way it's, um, they're mesmerized. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to learn more about this period. And I, I think that period is really a dark period that everyone should know about. But I think the difficulty with Cambodia is that people only know about the King of Rouge. And, right. you know, because of that, you know, everything that happens right now is overshadowed you know, by this, you know, dark, you know, terrible period in 19, between 75 and 79. But what is happening right now is just as dark and just as crazy and just as terrible, you know, and I realized that when I came, went back to Cambodia in 2008, you know, and I was walking through the, um, the halls of Tool Slang, and I know you've been there before. Indeed, yes. It's one of the most terrible uh, museums you can ever, you know, go to, you know, it, it shows all the torture implements, you know, and all the faces of the people who have been tortured and um, imprisoned there. And as, but I was, as I was walking through the halls, you know, and I looked at the faces that were staring at me, I realized, you know, that this could be us 10 years from now, you know, we could be walking through the halls of some other museum and staring at the faces of people who are being, um, you know, uh, who, who, whose lives are being lost, you know, who are being thrown off their land, whose livelihood, you know, is being removed. Um, and the indigenous people, especially in the northeastern part of Cambodia, you know, whose culture and traditions and probably language, you know, will become extinct because of the things that we're doing right now. And I don't want that to happen. You know, I don't want us to regret not having documented this and also you know discussing yeah. this and and tr trying to find a way to change you know what is happening. so in the few screenings you've done let's i know you're, you're not going to believe this but kellyanne but we're getting close to the end of of our time uh, on our conversation it always goes so fast it's ridiculous yeah. um is is there um and and I want to talk just you know before we wrap up in a few minutes I want to talk about the 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 website and about uh, what yes. you're trying to do with the with the screenings. Tell me a little bit more about uh, the screenings and 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 how you're you know you you talked about being hopeful and 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 hope being in the young people and so on and I think you're bang on. Tell me a little bit more about how that is um, becoming I suppose more tangible and 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 uh, noticeable in in country. Yeah, so so we're we've um, started this campaign, a grassroots campaign called Changing the Course, you know, which is to help change the course of Cambodia's future. <laughs> and um, the the purpose of the the, the campaign is to bring um, sixty screenings to villages and universities all across the country. And we're really focusing on you know universities especially and university students and trying to you know change the course of their way of thinking you know, their perspective, you know, on the country and their perspective on themselves and their capacity, you know, to, to change you know, the, the course of Cambodia's future. And so that's the campaign in Cambodia, um, you know, which is to help, you know, screen the film, but also, you know, get people to discuss, you know, the important issues that are facing the country right now, which is, you know, the deforestation, the, 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 the forests that are being cut down in Cambodia and the indigenous people, who are impacted, you know, by this this devastation, and then the um, overfishing that is happening all over Cambodia, um, 
and the families whose livelihoods are affected, you know, by the the extinction of many fish species, you know, in the water, as well as the hydroelectric dams that are being constructed all over Cambodia, not to mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the third issue, which is the um, the livelihood, you know, of garment factory workers and and their ability you know, to sustain themselves, you know, with the wages that are existent right now, you know, and, you know, not only their, their wages, but also, you know, trying to gain better working conditions for them in the factories. And so those are issues that are really at the fore of, you know, Cambodia's um, uh, topics of concern at the moment, you know, even during the elections, you know, a lot of these issues came up and, you know, especially the issue of livelihood. Um, so I think that the film can really help, you know, to spur that conversation. And we hope, you know, when, you know, through film, through the screenings within the next, not just the next year, but in the next five years, you know, before Cambodia's sixth national election, you know, that some change can happen and that the young people will be inspired enough, you know, to, to maybe, um, you know, make a fuss. <laughs> yes. Well, is isn't it true that the uh, the ruling party lost the vote? Was it forty percent of the seats yeah. in this election? They um, they lost a lot of seats, and the um, the the opposition party gained more seats than they ever gained before. And I think that that's really uh, a wonderful thing. You know, I think it means that um, the ruling party needs to take a look, you know, um, at their policies and, you know, do things differently. You know, I think this is a, a message to them that they need to do things differently and change their way of doing things or else, you know, they, in the next election, they will probably lose. And, and I think even though the opposition party didn't win, I think that because the opposition party has a you know, large number of seats in parliament, I think it also means that they will have, a say yes in, in in the policies that are being implemented in Cambodia it's almost then, almost those, like a, a shot across the bow sorry exactly, about the sorry exactly. about the uh, metaphor yeah. yeah so for those two th those two reasons I think that democracy is you know starting to work in Cambodia and I think that that's a good sign a hopeful sign you know for the country and for the young people you know who are you know coming up to the front you know and and taking on you know positions of leadership i think every position is can be a position of leadership you know for the young people in cambodia and um and i think and i hope that the film can help to inspire them you know to 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 actively you know take part and 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 voice you know their opinion about what's going on in Cambodia. So just before we wrap up and we push the website and, and, and so on, um, how the heck did you le go from law into filmmaking? <laughs> and I oh. think we need to, we need, we'll need to regroup down the road uh, once you've done the tour with the film and chat a bit more about that. Cause I find that fascinating because I, yeah. I, I spent 18 years as a construction worker uh, uh -huh. as an oh, elect. Awesome. Yeah. I always want to be a construction worker. Yeah, I'm an, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I'm an electrician. And, and so I left the trade, went to study uh, my master's degree in philosophy and, you know, never looked back. And so, you know, now I'm working in international development and social justice issues. Who knew? How, what, what, what the heck happened with you? See, my river of life is always changing course. <laughs> yes, there you go. Nice. But I think it, it goes back to what I said before that, you know, I never do anything because I'm able to or that I have a technical capacity or ability to do it. Um, but because of passion, you know, and and it was, you know, I was working in Iraq at that time in 2006 and I became really impassioned by the issue of Iraqi refugees. And I thought that the only way that I could get across to the communities and to, you know, the international public was by making a documentary about it. Mm. And even though I had no skills, I could never, I couldn't, you know, I didn't know how to shoot a video camera, you know, at all before working on the film. Um, I just knew that I wanted to do something and I wanted to communicate and connect with people about this important issue. And so I think that's really what it is. You know, I think all my life, that's always what I've always done, which is follow what I feel passionate about rather than consider what I'm really good at. 
driven um, by driven by the idea and not the dollar. I love it. <laughs> well, that's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a documentary filmmaker for crying out loud. You're not going to you're not going to make any money, are you? Not at all. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I was just struggling to get this across. <laughs> I, I I believe it. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of screenings, though, if there's anyone interested in in hosting any community screenings, uh, you know, they can visit our website at um, ariverchangescourse.com and and find out ways to host a screening in their local community, you know, because we're really interested in, you know, sharing the film with as many people as possible, not only in the United States and Cambodia, but, you know, really in Canada and all over the world. Um, and also, you know, you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter and on Facebook, you know, and Twitter, we update, you know, constantly with updates about what's happening in Cambodia, you know, and, you know, with updates about the film, um, but really the important stuff that's happening in Cambodia. And, you know, especially when I was in Cambodia for the elections, you know, I made some videos um, that I posted on YouTube about, you know, Kyo's visit, you know, to um, her village and at the ballot box and then you know, updating with, um, you know, all the recent stuff that's happening. That's great. And you're, you're also doing, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, like a Kickstarter like fundraising campaign to sort of yeah, sponsor called, screenings. Yeah. It's called rally.org. Uh, and we're, you know, getting people to, you know, to donate funds so that we can continue to do this, the grassroots screenings in Cambodia. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Hey, listen, I'm I'm looking at your website. Thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, I what? How many awards? About eight awards, ten awards. You guys have won for the film. That's incredible. It really is. <laughs> And I'm just going to wrap this up before I, my final thank you. The Sydney Film Festival Review, a quote from it says, quote, A River Changes Course is a beautiful title for this poignant film capturing the sense that what once was certain is now changing immeasurably, close quote. What a beautiful way to end the interview. What a, what a, what a telling comment about the film itself. Thank you so much uh, uh, for being with us today. And uh, I hope we can uh, I hope we can share a drink at the Foreign Correspondents I Club. I hope so too, David. And it's really been a pleasure chatting with you um, and I, I love your your diverse background too I think that you know that's really what the you know living life is about it's just exploring new ways of thinking and doing things you know so it's great that you have done so many wonderful things too thanks